Good morning, good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Let me let me just, just play up just a just a, a few moments of it. We've come to lift him this morning. We've come to lift his this morning. I got to cut it off because I don't want them cutting me off. But I, I just, I needed you to just hear that little piece. That's that little piece this morning, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Give me a moment so that I can get myself situated here. Yes, Lord. Thank you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Woo, Jesus. And today we are still praying through the attributes, the names of God. And, and this has been, I don't know about you, but this has really just been a blessing to me as we have been going through these lessons and just these times of prayer about who God is. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so for those who may be watching me for the first time, I'm Dr. Jewel Williams, and this is Mountain Movers Prayer. And again, we are praying through the attributes, the names of God. And today we are praying and talking about the fact that his name is holy. His name is holy. His name is holy. Thank you, Jesus. His name is holy. Thank you, Father. His name is holy holy. And so the first name that we're going to pray through and talk about is Jehovah Me Mekadish Mekadishka Mekadishka. I, I, I say it right and then you know you get in the mood and you, you get Mekad Mekadishka Mekadishka. And it means Jehovah the Lord who sanctifies you. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord who sanctifies you. And so the first time that this was seen was in Exodus 31 and 13. And you also see it in Leviticus 20 and 8. And so these are little small pieces of scripture. But I just want to want to give you the backdrop and, and talk about this. So in 31, 13, it says, um, tell Excuse me. Tell the people of Israel, be careful to keep my Sabbath day for the Sabbath is a sign of the co covenant between me and you from generation to generation. It is given so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy, who makes 
you holy. And um, what is also interesting, if you read the entirety of Exodus 31, it start off where God is giving Moses his instructions on how he has specifically set aside some people with, with for for some tasks or some jobs, some assignments in the body, in, in the people. He said he's given great wisdom. He's given them the ability to, to, uh, to have the expertise in all kinds of crafts. He said he's made the master craftsmen expert in working in gold and silver and bronze. He has skilled them in engraving and mountain gemstones and in carving stone. He is a master of every craft. And then he also goes on in verse six and says that he's also given someone this up, another individual, he's crafted them to be able to make all kinds of things. And immediately, you know, I thought about this and I said, Lord, I thank you today that you are reminding us of something vital for us to understand. That part of what us being set set aside for and sanctified for is how we show up in our crafts. Come on, somebody. How we show up in our giftedness. How we show up to be who God has called for us to be. You and I have been given an assignment. We have been crafted. God has given us abilities on the inside of us so that you and I can show up and do what he has called for us to do. He sanctifies us and makes us holy because why? We are incapable of doing it in our own power, in our own strength. To sanctify us means to consecrate, purify, approve, dedicate, and hollow. I just am excited today to know that God has looked at you and I and said, I'm going to craft you in my image, but I'm going to also put inside of you the ability to create, the ability to craft. See, God is a creator, he's made people that can create. Now we make a decision. We can create havoc or we can create peace. We can create upset or we can create a uh, uh, stability. We make a decision how we want to use the ability of creativity that God has put in us. And I just want to pray into that because God wants us to be reminded today that this holy God, this Yahweh that we worship, this, this mighty Jehovah, he took time enough to say, I'm going to create in you the abilities to be able to do things well. I, I, when I got began to read that in, in, in Exodus 31, when he said, I am I'm giving you the ability of wisdom, I'm giving you the ability by way of the spirit of God to be able to do these crafts, to be able to create these these. Uh, uh, these masterpieces. He, he said, I'm going to, now this was for the house. Come on somebody. But can I tell you, when you start a business, I just speak this over every person with an entrepreneurial ability in you. God says, because you are my child, I will give you by way of the spirit of God, great wisdom. Don't you know God will give you the wisdom. He will give me the wisdom we need to do the task that we need to do, whether it's in the house or whether it's in the marketplace. See, we all, often want to limit God's abilities in us just to the church, just to the pulpit, just to the pastor, the preacher, the apostle. But every one of us have access to the greatness that God has placed on the inside of us. And so Father, we come today and that's the first thing we say. Thank you, Yahweh. So thank you, Yahweh, for loving us enough to put gifts on the inside of us. Thank you for loving us enough to make us have the ability to be craftsmen and to be craftswomen, to be able to do those things with our hands that you have uh, deemed that should happen through us. You've given us the ability to work with wood and gems and stones. You've been given some of us the ability to work with numbers. You've given us the ability to write. You've given us the ability to do and create by way of the spirit of God. Now, Father, we tap in and ask you to release wisdom over us today. Lord, release wisdom over those that you've gifted to be teachers. Release wisdom today over those that you have created and given the ability to create with their hands. I think about Queen and her jewelry. You've given those the, the ability to see and to create. I, I thank you for those that you have, have placed that ability on the inside of them that they may tap into it and allow the spirit of God to work through them. We thank you today, Lord, to know that you work on the inside of us. You are that 
awesome God that sanctifies us. So Father, we come back and bring you every gift that you've given to us and we ask that you would sanctify it. What does that mean? Consecrate it. First and foremost, we want our gifts, our spiritual gifts, our natural gifts to be set aside to you. We consecrate our jobs to you. We consecrate our lives to you. We consecrate the things that you have put on the inside. We come and bring them back to you. We take no credit for it because we couldn't do it. Had it not been, what did the scripture say? Had it not been for the spirit of God, the spirit of God working on the inside of us, it would help us to be able to accomplish what we did. And then we ask you to purify us, purify our spiritual gifts, purify our, even our gifts that that are working in the marketplace, purify us, Lord, so that we will work and do unto you that what we do, Lord God, is set aside for you. So we won't look to try to get a wrong gain. We won't look to, to prostitute our gifts. We won't look to to prostitute ourselves. And and prostitute don't mean that I'm on the corner, but prostitute in this sense means that I won't let anybody take the gifts that you put on the inside of me and use it for anything other than to glorify you. Yes, we may make money from the our marketplace, but in it and before it and because of it, we all we ask you to purify it and we hand it back to you. And then Lord God, because you sanctifies, we look for your approval. Not approval of man. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to Jewel Denise Williams. Let me tell you, I spent too much of my life, too much of my life worried about, is y'all going to like me? They don't like me. They don't like this about me. They don't like that about me. And you know what happened? It became a bondage. It became a chokehold. I couldn't speak. Why? Because if I wanted to speak what God said, that concern, that worry, what was it doing? It was choking the breath out of me. It was choking choking the life out of me. It wasn't until I finally said, no, God, I want your approval. I seek your approval. And because I seek your approval, it's okay if you don't understand me. It's okay if they don't like you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know why it's okay? Because the approval that you need comes from the God that makes you, the Lord who sanctifies you. It comes from him. It comes from Jehovah God. It comes from him. It comes from him. And then their sanctification means to dedicate. Father, I thank you as your people. We come and dedicate ourselves to you. And dedication don't just mean it's a service. Like, okay, you know, I dedicated my child and now my child could do whatever I dedicate. No, dedicated means that I wake up today with your assignments on my mind. I go to sleep today with your assignments on my mind. I dedicate my life to you. I don't do what Jewel wants to do. I go through you and say, Lord, what is it that you want from me? How do you want me to show up today? How do you want me to do? Many times we might find ourselves doing things that don't seem like you're getting no pay for it. Don't seem like you're getting no thanks for it. You may do things that don't seem like nobody care, but if you dedicated yourself to the Lord and he said do it, don't you know that that is your reward? It is coming from him because he is the one that approves you. He is the one that consecrates you and he is the one that purifies you and then sanctify means to hollow hollow to to, you know when you think about a hollow tree what has happened all of the inside of what was in it had to be pulled out so God wants to hollow you and in this sense he wants to hollow you for himself he wants to pull out everything that's not like him I'm gonna tell you what what has just really been a thing that has has watched made me grieve. I've watched God's sons and daughters start out oftentimes on a good note. And then you know what happens? You start to get a little following. You start to get a, a couple of two, three people that, that want to share your posts. And, and you know what happens to us? We get a little stuffed up and we start to think we too good for people. How dare you ask me for a question? How dare you um, look this way and look that way? How dare you? I, don't you know I'm the great somebody? I'm the great this. Or I'm the great that. But I'm going to tell you, I believe by way of the Holy Spirit, God wants us to remember that we are sanctified unto him. And because we are sanctified unto him, whatever accolades we get from men, we need to turn around and give it all to him anyway. So when you say, Pastor Jewel or Prophet Jewel or Apostle Jewel, you did so and so and I appreciate it. 
Thank you, but unto God gets the glory because Joel cannot do a thing had I not been hollowed for his purpose, had I not been approved by him, had I not been consecrated by him, had he not purifies me, and if he not continue to purify me daily, I need to come daily and say, Lord, you are the one who sanctifies me. Lord, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. You are Jehovah. Makadishka. You are Makadishka. Yeah, come on, somebody. You are Makadishka, the sanctifier. You are Makadishka. You are the one that sanctifies. You are the one, God. You are the one that sanctifies. You are the one that sets aside your people. And I declare, Lord God, that we thank you today that you are doing the work on the inside of us, that you are refining our gifts. Father, I thank you for every prophet, every pastor, every apostle, preacher, every ministry gift that watches this. Thank you for sanctifying us. But not only in the sanctifying us, but holy God, Keep us in the place where we stay humble before you. Lord God, we come and say, forgive us if we've been too high-minded. Forgive us if we thought too much of ourselves. Forgive us if we looked at others and judged them unworthy because they didn't fit up to our standard. They didn't speak like I spoke. They didn't have the gifts like I have. Father, thank you for helping us to remember that we all are a gift. Thank you, Jesus. God says, remember that we are gifts, not just gifted people, but we are gifts to one another. We are gifts to the body. Thank you, Jesus. We are gifts to the body. We are gifts to one another. The gifts that's on the inside of you are not for you. They're for me. The gifts on the inside of me are not for me. They're for you. Thank you, Jesus. I hear that. I suck up. They are for you. So what do you do if somebody gives you a gift? You unwrap it with excitement. You see what's in the gift. And then you display the gift. You tell people how excited and happy you are for the gift. What would you do with a child if you gave them a gift and they opened the gift and looked at it and just threw it away? You would not be so quick to give that child another gift. Well, I come by where the Holy Spirit and say, God says, stop throwing away his children because you don't like the way the package look. Come on, somebody. Come on. See, many of us, we're throwing each other away because we don't like the way your gift looks. Your gift don't look the way we think it ought to look. So we are throwing it away. But we're talking about his name is holy. And as a holy God, he expects us to be a holy people, not because we do it in ourselves, but because he the one that cleans us up. And if I remember who Jewel was. And if I remember that I couldn't clean my own self up, then how dare I come before you and because you ain't as clean as I think you ought to be, I put you down, I throw you away. In fact, it is my responsibility as an intercessor to pray for your holiness. It is my responsibility as an intercessor to pray that God fix you up, not to meet my standard, but to meet his. Come on, somebody. Leviticus 20 and 8 says, keep all my decrees by putting them in practice, for I am the Lord who makes you holy. See, we got to stop talking about what he is and who he is if we not put it into practice. You might as well just get off the fence. Stop trying to be lukewarm. Stop telling me how good he is and how great he is and how much he loves his people. But then you won't love his people. You got a bad attitude. You ain't got nothing good to say about nobody. Never. You're not putting into practice the love of God. The holiness of God, the God that sanctifies. Now, you and I can't sanctify, but we can show sure bring somebody to the one that sanctifies. We can bring them to him. We can bring them to him. We can bring them to Jehovah Me- Mekatishka. 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 I'm going to get that right. Mekatishka. We can bring them to him. Why? Because we know what it felt like to be unclean. We know what it felt like to be dirty. We know what it felt like. We know what it felt like. We know what it felt like. So we bring him. Now, if you look in that Leviticus 
20. Now, I just gave you the verse where that particular, but it is talking about this disobedience. And one of the things that stood me stood out to me was this, this warning about do not sacrifice your children to the God Malak, Malak, Molak, Molak. And that was that, that Canaanite God associated with child sacrifice through fire or war. And we might say, well, I'm not sacrificing my child today to Molech. But let me tell you something. If our children see us and we are in spiritual wars with one another, guess what sometimes happens? They sometimes become the casualty. Did you hear what I said? They sometimes become the casualty of the wars that are going on when we be self-righteous and self-appointed uh, deciders on who God is and what he ought to do. And we, we become the ones that, that, that make our children now have to deal with some things that they shouldn't have to if they saw us standing in the right relationship with God, loving God's people. And I'm not saying that you love nobody's sin. I'm not talking about loving what's not righteous before God, but I'm talking about people. So God help us even in the name of Jesus to put ourselves in a place where our children are not dealing with the outcome, the fires, the wars. They're not being sacrificed to wrong things. They're not being sacrificed and dying because of what we as the people of God have been battling about. Lord God, I, I, I think about my own, one of my children and I don't want to embarrass her, but one of my children for a long time didn't want to have nothing to do with God, not because of me, but because she saw the way the church treated her family. Jesus. So I've been battling and fighting for her soul. And I say, God, no more should the body of Christ allow our youth to die and become sacrificing to a God that uh, wants to destroy them by way of fire, that wants to destroy them, that, that wants to make them be the fallout of our self-righteous battles. We serve a holy God and he sanctifies us. Father, we ask that you sanctify us. Sanctify Sanctify our lives, sanctify our thinking, sanctify our hearts, sanctify us, set us apart in every area of life so that we can do what you've called us to do. Because you are the God who sanctifies. You are. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then we not only serve in understanding that he is a holy God, we also understand that he is the God that gives us peace. He is the God of peace. He is Jehovah Shalom. And this Shalom is not just peace the way we often think, like I'm at peace and then I'm flip-flopping. No, no, no. We're talking about Shalom means peace absent of strife. It means complete. It means sound. So we're talking about Jehovah, who is the Lord and master, Lord and master, Jehovah, that Yahweh means Lord and master. So we're talking about, we are serving the holy God that is the Lord and master of the absence of strife. Come on, somebody. He is the Lord and master of completeness. He is the Lord and master of soundness. He is the Lord and master of the entire world. And though we might see strife, though might we might see people that are not complete and broken and, uh, and, and not sound in mind and body, guess what? 
God still is a God that can bring us to that shalom, that place of absent of strife, absent of internal strife. Many are going, can't have God's peace because there's internal strife going on. Father, we speak to the eternal strife going on in the hearts of your people today and we say shalom. We speak your shalom, Lord God. And in the process where you are bringing that absent sin of strife, where there's this completeness, complete soundness, completeness of who we have been called to do. Why? Because that is what the Holy God does as he sanctifies you. He pulls out the strife on the inside of you. He delivers you from the battles that are going on inside of you. He delivers you from the battles raging in your mind, the battles raging in your spirit, in your soul, the battles that are raging on the inside. The first battle he speaks to is the battle battle of absence of him. He, If there's an absence of him in your life, there's no way you can have shalom. Shalom comes when you receive him. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, I speak today that somebody that's not in relationship with you, I don't care if they accidentally clicked on this thing. Maybe they click on because they see this weird woman and she flapping her hands and she got flowers. Lord God, let them stop long enough to hear that you want them to receive your peace. I, I just feel like there's somebody that's been battling on what to do. You, you're fearful of COVID. You're fearful of losing your job. You got all of this strife on the inside. And there's even an anger towards God because it's like, God, why are you letting this happen? But God wants you to know today when you receive him, he releases his shalom unto you. He releases his shalom unto you. And he just told me to tell you today as his children, if there's a lack of peace in you, that's because you let the enemy trick you out of the victory you are already have. I said this before. It's like hitting a home run. You still got to run the bases to get the score and you got to touch every base, but the score is already yours. God says peace is already yours. Yeah, sometimes you got to run the bases of issues. Sometimes you got to run the bases of, of neglect. Sometimes you got to run the bases and touch those bases of where there's been lack. There You got to touch the bases where some Sometimes there's been discord. You got to touch the bases, but you know what? Every time you touch the base, come on, somebody. Even I come on, thank you, G. Every time you touch the base, guess what happened? That's an accomplishment. That's a manifestation. Because guess what? When you run the bases, when you touch home, when you touch first, the first base. That, that, that's counted. That first base has now been part of it. When you second base, third base, and home run, the, the home play, every time you touch a base, that's the manifestation that you're that much closer to the fulfillment of the whole run. God says every time you touch a base, every time you touch a situation, you're that much closer to the manifestation of the complete peace that he has for you. I don't know about somebody else. That blessed me right there. Today, Lord God, all the peace I receive the shalom for myself. Yes, sometimes we got to go through some stuff. My children might be going through some stuff. My husband might be going through some stuff. I might be going through some stuff. You might be going through some stuff. But run your base, baby. Run your base. Run your bases, baby. Why? Because the shalom, the peace of God is there for you. He says, I'm a holy God and I only allow you to run the bases. Hey, come on somebody. Because in the running you get stronger. In the running, you learn how to play the game. In the running, you know how to be better at what you know how to do. In running the bases, you learn to be a better you. Remember, I started at the beginning by saying part of the holiness of God is to make us, to clean us, to hollow us out. We run the bases because he got to hollow out fear. Some of you sometimes won't do stuff. Why? Because you fearful and you talk yourself out of it. And God will say, no, you know what he going to do? He going to make you face that fear. Why? Because he don't want you to lose that face. He don't want you to lose the manifestation of the peace of the promises that he had for you. So run your base, baby. That's right, Janice. Run your bases. Run it. Run it. Run your race. And don't get weary in the running of the race. Race. God, I thank you today. God, we thank you today that 
you are the God of peace. Uh, Judges 6, 24 said, and Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom, that which means the Lord is peace. And the altar remained that Lord, I thank you today. We are building some altars of peace on the inside of us, and they're going to remain. They're going to remain. They're going to remain. We declare, Lord God, that even in the midst, if you look at all of that Judge 6, this is when the people of Israel, they was being beat down, and they was looking for some help, and God heard them. I want somebody to know today, God says, I hear you, children. I hear your call and your petition. I hear you reaching out to me. I hear your need. I hear, I hear, I hear. And because because I am a holy God. I am a just and right God. I am a loving God. I am not just loving in an, in an, in that way. I am love personified because I am love. In my love, I give you peace. In my love, I release the peace of God over you. And you will see how to make it through your difficulty. I know that sometimes you find yourself in places that are difficult, but I hear the Holy Ghost say, but I am there. <laughs> Remember, I even said one week that one of the names of God is I am there. He is there. He's right here right now, but he's there where you're going. And you know what? He ain't going to send you some way, someplace that he is not already there. See, we, we sometimes let fear keep us from moving. Why? Because we think God ain't there. But his promise is I am there. Oh, come on, somebody. Lord God, we Thank you that you are the God that is there and there is peace there. There is peace. There is peace. I just release peace. I can feel it. There's been so much stress. There's much more much burden and I get it. I hear it. I know that there's a lot of word that's going on. There's some things happening here and there and everywhere, but I come to tell you what the Lord told me. And the Lord said that he is the Lord. He is Jehovah Shalom, that he can give you perfect peace, that he can give you that stillness, that absence of strength, that complete understanding and completeness in him. And he can give you that soundness because the scripture tells us he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he did what? He give us a sound mind. He give us soundness of understanding. He give us wisdom. I said that at the beginning, that one of the things that he does in the sanctifying us is he also gives us wisdom, but he gives us those gifts that are on the inside of us. Gifts for the body, gifts for the old marketplace, everything about you. Don't you know there's nothing about you that God's hand is not on? If you as a teacher, don't you know he wants to teach through you, teaching on the church, teaching in the school, whatever your gift is, he wants it all. He wants it all. And he sanctifies and sets it all back unto himself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm not leaving you. I'm not forsaking you in the waiting. Come on, somebody. In the waiting, sometimes it feels like he's left us. It feels like he done, done moved away. But see, that's a feeling. We ain't hooked on a feeling. We are walking in the truth. Did you hear what I said? We're not hooked on a feeling. We are walking in the truth. And the truth is the Lord is our shepherd. We're still talking about his holiness, but Jehovah Ra, his holiness, His he's that shepherd. He's that shepherd. He's that shepherd. He's the Lord and master. But he's that he's the one that feeds us. He supplies your food. And, and, and I like that they say he's a good friend. Don't you know God is also a good friend? He's a good father, but he's a good friend. Think about one of your best friends. Why are they your best friend? Because they listen to you. They, they allow you to be you. They they take you with your flaws and all. They, 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 they don't let you stay in a place of being flawed, but they understand that you are. And they're going to press you on to better. The, the, a, a good friend says, hey, Jewel, um, you, 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 you've been in your emotions too long. A good friend says, I understand what you feel, but girl, you need to come up out of them emotions. A good friend and to say, Jewel, you, listen, I, I love you and, 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 and I see you doing good work. A good friend gonna come and say, I, I, I'm, I, I'm proud of you. A good friend is gonna cheer you on. A good friend is gonna correct you when you need corrected. Come on, son. A good friend will give you a hug when you need a hug. A good friend lets you cry 
A good friend lets you weep. A good friend, a good friend, a good friend. God says he is a good friend. Mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's a good friend, but also a good friend who provides extravagant nourishment. Come on, somebody. He, he provides protection. He provides rest, rest when you're weary. He said, when you are tired of, of the journey and you want to give up, you can't give up. You know why? You can't give up because he ain't going to let you. I, I, I think uh, Leslie wrote something to me recently. She said, every time, and I'm paraphrasing, every time when I, uh, me personally, when I feel like I'm almost about to be like taken out, God swoops in like that mama eagle and he pulls me up on wings of evil eagles so that I'm able to soar again. He He lifts me back up. He, he brings rest to my soul. And sometimes he'll just tell me, Jewel, go yourself over there and just take a nap. Go lay down. Go, 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 go and rest yourself, rest your physical body and, and, and take a time of knowing that you ain't God. I am. Thank you, Jesus. And that Psalms 23rd one says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I, I, I use this before. I have all that I need. Can I tell somebody today, you have all that you need, but you might say, but, but, but pastor, I don't have a job, but you still get all that you need. You might say, well, but, but my health is, is not what it needs to be. And, and I'm concerned about some reports that I just got. Well, I'm, I'm concerned about what, what the doctor going to tell me when I when I go to the doctor. I, I'm, I'm concerned my health. I, I got to have surgery and, 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 and I don't know how I'm going to heal. I, what about that? But I still want to tell you today. You have all that you need. Well, you might say, well, but, but my marriage is on the rocks. My, my relationships are crazy. My children are lost their ever loving mind, Jesus. But I want to tell you, but you still have all you need. But, 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 but what about they treated me bad? They lied on me. They mistreated me. They used me. They, they did all kind of evil towards me. But I still want to tell you, you have all you need because Jehovah Ra is with you. He is with you. The Lord is my shepherd. He provides for you. He knew that they were going. Remember, because he already there. So even before you walked into the betrayal, he knew you were going to be betrayed. But then you might say, but why would God let me be betrayed? You know, God's sovereignty. That's the part about the holiness of God. God is sovereign. And we can't always put him in a box and make him fit the way we want to fit. Sometimes, 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 my brothers and sisters, God let you go by way of sacrifice. He let you go by way of the cross. Come on, somebody. He let you go by way of being that living sacrifice. Why? Because there's a greater result coming on the other side. There's a greater you coming on the other side. There's something he's doing going back to the beginning. There's something that he's doing that he's working and hollowing out in you so that a better you shows up after the betrayal. Come on, somebody. There's a better you coming and showing up after the lack. There's a better you showing up after the bankruptcy. There's a better you showing up after the divorce. There's a better you showing up even after all that you've gone through, even after your sickness, even after your lack. There's a better you showing up. Why? Because you have all that you need. And Yahweh, 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 he is working on the inside. He is doing a great thing on the inside. He is working out something for you and I. Father, we say thank you that you are our shepherd, that we do not lack anything. We thank you today, Lord, to know that as we wait on you and trust in you, that you are working some things out in our favor for us even right now. We thank you that you are a holy God. We thank you because we come today like the, the, the psalmist David and he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I thank you because I have all that I need. I'm going to get my rest. Thank you Jesus. I'm going to lay down in some peaceful places. You're going to lead me beside some peaceful streams. All the chaos that's going on right now, that's not my destiny because the promise is you're going to lead me beside some peaceful streams. I thank you for the streams of waters that I'm going past that are peaceful and the promise is for the renewing of my strength. I thank you today. You are renewing the strength of your children even right 
right now you're renewing their strength. You are guiding us along the right paths. Huh? So Father, we're not going to venture to the left or to the right, but we're going to stay in alignment with the path that you have us on. And we thank you that not only you're going to guide us along the right path, but we're going to bring honor to your name as we go. We're going to be honorable in all that we do. Huh? When they see us, they're going to see you. Why? Because we carry your e image. And even when we walk through some of the darkest valleys, no fear, no fear, no fear. We will not be afraid because you are close beside us. And there are times not only are you close beside us, but you are carrying us through your rod and your staff comfort and protect us. Father, you are keeping and beating back down the attacks of the enemy. You are beating back all the lies of the enemy. You, Lord God, are keeping him at bay. He comes and tries to snatch us out of your hand, but God, your promise is that you will keep us. You protect us. You are that great shepherd protecting us, and even as you protect us through, you are comforting us in the midst of the battle. Lord God, I hear that for somebody. In the midst of your battle, God said, not only is he protecting you, he said, but receive his comfort. Come on. And then, God, come on, somebody. At the end of the journey, at the end of coming through these dark places, at the end of coming through these dark valley, you're going to prepare a feast for me. I come on somebody, I want to tell you it's feasting time. I'm getting ready to eat. I'm getting ready to feast. I'm getting ready to feast in the presence of my enemies. I ain't talking about people. I'm talking about, because you know what? We always instantly go, all oh, my haters. I'm I'm feasting in the presence of the enemy of my soul. He may take form like people, but it is it is God saying, devil, uh-uh, this one right here getting ready to feast. Get ready to eat, children of God. Y'all getting ready to eat. You're getting ready to feast. And not just eat, but feast. I don't know about you. Instantly, I thought about you going to like a wedding and you know they got all of this good food and you got all of these hors d'oeuvres and you go, well, maybe I don't want that one right now, but I'll take that shrimp or I'll take that one. I'll take that little wing thing or I'll have another one of that. And guess what? There is no limit on how much you can feast. Father, I thank you because you said right now we are feasting. And you prepared a feast for us in the presence of our enemies. I thank you. I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus uh, that this is feasting time. God is preparing your table. Uh, and God is preparing your table. Uh, God is preparing your table. There are many that didn't want you to sit at their table, but God said, that's okay. I have made a clearing in the front and set up a table just for you. Uh, they tried to push you to the back, but God said, I'm pulling you to the front. Uh, they wanted you on the outside skirt. They tried to make you be irrelevant, but God said, I'm feasting. You feasted, and the table he's setting for you is on the forefront. I hear it. God said, I got some forefront anointings uh, that I'm about to release in my people. He said, you on the forefront. You on the forefront. You on the forefront, and it's time to feast. And then he says, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. God, thank you for anointing my head with oil. I thank you for the anointing that you have placed upon our lives. Lord, not on the anointing in the spiritual sense, we anointed to do that which you've called to us to do in the body. But Lord God, I thank you for the oil of anointing that flows on your children for business, for entrepreneurship, for marketplace. Lord, I thank you for attorneys and lawyers, doctors. I thank you, Lord God, for the anointing and wisdom that you are flowing over your people today. We are, we are, the oil is flowing. It starts at the head. Why? Because the mind has to go first. I thank you, G. You got to align your thinking first before your feet gonna follow. The mind got to align before the feet will follow. Come on, somebody. You hear what I'm saying? God, thank you for anointing our heads with oil. Anoint us right now so that we hear right, do right, align ourselves correctly. Why? So that our feet will follow and we can put feet to our faith and go where you have sent us. And then, Lord God, our cups overflow with blessing. Lord, the, 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 the word that you gave me about that years ago was this. Do not limit your size of your cup. God, I thank you because the cup is overflowing with blessing. I'm not limiting my cup. God says, stop giving him that cap full cup. God, God, I wish I had a cap in here. Here we go. Come on, somebody. 
God said he got a blessing for you. And many of us are bringing him this. We bring him this little cap. Now it's still overflow, but what, what is this cap? This cap represents your faith. This cap represents your trust. This cap represents how much you're willing to trust him. God said, you got to bring him something bigger. Bring him something bigger. I, I, I don't have nothing bigger than this. This Right now, all I got is this bottle. But I tell the Lord all the time, I was like, Lord, increase my faith. I'm going to bring you the ocean-sized cup. Come on, somebody. I want to bring you an ocean-sized cup and then your problem is that you still go overflow it. So I thank you for overflow blessings being released over your children because today we no longer are limiting our cup. We're no longer limiting, limiting our trust, our faith, our belief. We are bringing you an unlimited ability, an unlimited access, uh, unlimited. Why? Because we letting you, who are the one that sanctifies, you are hollowing out that stuff that keeps us limited. No more limits in our lives. No more, no more limits because we thank you for the overflow of the blessings that you are doing. Because surely, 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 come on somebody, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. God, today I thank you for your blessings and your goodness is following me. Father, surely, not just perhaps, but surely, surely, all your goodness and your unfailing love, not only follow me, but you say, pursue me. Father, I thank you that you are pursuing us. The Lord say, I am pursuing you with my love. I am pursuing you with my goodness. And as he pursues you, let me tell you what the devil does. The devil comes and attacks. When you have great attack, Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you have great attack in your life, God says, realize that goodness and unfailing love must be right behind. It's pursuing you. And so the enemy who, who thinks he's slick, he tries to get in first so he can discourage you. He tries to get in first so he can convince you that there's no goodness coming. He tries to convince you that God doesn't love you. He tries to convince you that maybe you thought wrong, acted wrong. But I come today and tell you that when the pursuit of the enemy is on you, when the, the enemy of your of your soul is trying to break you down, kill you, surely Come on, somebody. Surely his goodness, God's goodness, surely his unfailing love is in pursuit of you. And he says, we're going to live in the house of the Lord forever. God, we thank you that you are this awesome, mighty God. We thank you today that you are doing the work on the inside of us like never before. Lord God, we say, listen to us. And, and, and oh, great shepherd of Israel, you who led just Joseph's flock, you are the God enthroned between the cherubims huh? and you display your radiant glory. We give you honor today. Huh? We bow before you because you are an honorable God, a good and mighty God and we say thank you. Now Father, I thank you for each of your children today. I thank you, Lord God, for the goodness. I thank you for the mercy. I thank you for your unfailing love unto them. And Father, we just give you praise. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in Tawana's life today. Father, I just come and speak over her, Lord God, that the pursuit of God is following her. It's not only pursuing you, but Tawana, I declare it's going to overtake you. I declare an overtaking of you, of God's goodness and his mercy and his blessings all over you in the name of Jesus. He is pursuing you. I come on somebody. I thank you, Lord God, that he is pursuing you. And I just declare to Wanda that, that God is preparing your table. I declare that the table is set. I declare that you will feast upon his goodness. I hear the Lord said at the table for you, Tawana, is goodness and blessings. Well, uh, there's wholeness for you, Tawana, at his table. And we say thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, sapphire, sapphire, sapphire. I declare that the honor of the Lord is anointing your head with oil and the oil is running down your head. Uh, it's running down your head. I declare that the Lord say your cup is about to overflow. Overflow blessings to you, sapphire. And I hear the Lord say, now expand the faith. Uh, expand the trust. Uh, make a bigger cup is what he's saying. No more little cup. Uh, 
Give him an ocean sized cup and watch him overflow it. Give him a cup too big that you think is too big. And he said, watch Sapphire. I'm still going to overflow it. I declare over you, dollar, the, the, dollar, that the glory of the Lord is re- released on your life right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Darla, I declare God is saying, daughter, I have much for you and there is goodness and unfailing love pursuing you. Uh, I declare that as it pursues you and hollows you out, I hear the Lord said there is great mending that he has been doing to your heart, Darla. There's great mending that he's doing, great refreshing that he's doing. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I thank you in the name of Jesus uh, for what you are doing in Darla's life. And that's right. God says not only that, uh, remember when the woman was uh when the prophet told the woman to to bring the vessels and as long as she had a vessel it would pour in and the, the the oil would never end god says keep bringing the cups thank you leslie keep bringing the cups because as you bring the cups it's like with the woman the oil won't stop flowing god says if you keep bringing the vessel i'm gonna keep the flow going come on somebody and he says what's the vessel what's the cup in this instant he said also the cup in this instant is you keep bringing yourself to him and he will keep pouring in. He will keep anointing. He will keep the oil flowing. You got to keep bringing yourself to him. Y'all, this has made me happy. I wish I could just get up and dance. This has made me happy. He said, bring yourself to him. You are the living sacrifice. You are the vessel that he wants to make the vessel of honor. What should have been nothing. He said, I will make it a vessel of honor. Keep bringing yourself and he says, you are honored because he pours the oil over you. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. I think I saw Teresa. I'm looking down because I'm looking at my phone so I can see. I think I saw Teresa. And I just hear the Lord say for you, Teresa, if you there, just let me know you're still there. I hear the Lord say for you, Teresa, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord say for you, Teresa, that you have been a faithful servant. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. He said, woman of God, daughter, you have been faithful. And because you have been faithful in the little, he said, watch, I'm about to expand your territory. Come on, somebody. Teresa, God says he is expanding. Okay. He said, I am expanding your reach. I'm expanding what's on the inside of you. And it's like this. I've seen it for myself and I see it for you. Sometimes when you grow growing and going, God puts us these mantles, right? And the way he showed it to me was, I don't know if you watched those old army movies when the soldiers used to have the metal, the whole full metal jackets. And so he is taking you out of like that, that silver or the metal jacket. And he's putting you in a heavier jacket and it's a heavier and shinier metal. And he's changed. So it's like, he's changing the armor on you. And this, this jacket is a metal jacket and it's got a tail. It's got a trail to it. And he says, what happens is when he elevates some of his children, people trying to step on your cup tail. Oh, come on, somebody. So it's people that want to ride your coattail because they don't want to get their own anointing. They want to ride your coattail. But God said, Teresa, it's like I see you grab the back of your coat and snatch it around you. Oh, that's just funny to me. God said he ain't letting nobody ride your coattail. Come on, somebody. Nobody going to take the glory. He's going to receive the glory for what he's doing in you and through you. He said nobody's going to be able to take the reward. He said, don't you get discouraged. Don't you get frustrated. He said, you keep showing up and doing what he told you to do because I see him now preparing the soldiers that's going to come and work with you. He's preparing your army that's going to listen to you. They're going to willing to be willing to listen to you, uh, general. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm making you a general in the faith. He said, and I'm preparing you for war. I'm preparing you to prepare the army for war. He said, that's why sometimes when you, when you get this new upgrade in your mantle, it seemed heavy because it is heavy because it's the weight of glory on that mantle. There's a weight of glory. God showed me this a long time ago. The glory has weight, heaviness to it. He said, 
And that's why you got to not only get your physical in order, you got to be in order in your spirit and your soul because you got to be at a place where you can handle the weight so that it don't crush you. Come on, somebody. And he says for you, Teresa, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just praying into that. Lord God, I thank you for the upgrade that you have done in your daughter. I thank you, Lord God, that you are preparing that table for her. She is feasting in the presence. And I thank you, Lord God, that your protection is with her. I thank you that this season, there's greater protection that's coming for Teresa. And I thank you because Lord, he said, I'm going to send you into some dangerous spots, but know that even in those dangerous spots, there is great protection that is God is releasing upon you. And he said, I will be with you. There's going to be a peace and a comfort. And so you'll know where to go, where to set up and exactly what to do. He said, because you are there and you are not alone. Your angels are stationed right where you are. And he said, your protection, you are protected. He said, because the rod and the staff has been released in your, in your favor. Father, we just say thank you. Oh my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Bethany, I just come before you today. Um, and the beginning of this message, the Lord talked to me about, we talked about how the Lord um, is the one that sanctified us. And the scripture that I used was how he told Moses uh, that, that he was given wisdom to people and abilities to do great feats and great things. Um, he told him, I gave him wisdom and, and, and craftsmanship to, to create things. And, and so I just come Bethany and declare that God says that, that you have greatness in the ability to create in your hands. And so I pray into that in the name of Jesus, God sanctify this gift in Bethany. I, I just declare, Lord God, you know, somebody might say, well, you're just doing t-shirts or stuff like that. But God said, there's going to be great revelation, even in the sayings on your t-shirts. Come on, somebody. I just believe if God say, I can prophesy through a t-shirt, you can prophesy through a t-shirt. So Lord God, I thank you for the prophetic word that's about to be put on her t-shirts so that even when people see them, it's going to resonate. It's going to do something and they will be get it. Come on, somebody. I hear the Lord said the words on the t-shirts will become those things, which when they declare it, it's almost like they are putting it in the atmosphere because other people will say and they'll say the words that's on the t-shirt. He said they're coming into agreement with the gifts that he had on the inside of you. So Father, I thank you for the blessing that you are doing for Bethany in her business. And I hear that for other people. I don't know if Quinn is still on here, but but I hear the Lord say even with her and, and anybody that works with their hands, Sapphire and others that work with their hand, I hear the Lord saying that he is sanctifying that gift so that it's more than you simply saying, I wrote a book and I put myself in it. It's more than saying I put some page some something on the uh the pages Marcia as well I I see you Marcia um the um God says, even with your book, so with the writing, the, when you begin to write, God says, these are the things, the giftedness, the, the sanctification of what he is doing on the inside of us, that there is greatness. God says, I want you, he said, as my children, I want you to begin to see the things that I do to you on a different level. We seeing things here, God says, take it higher, take it higher, because as we take it higher, God is saying, the things that you do, they are kingdom connected. See, we got to stop thinking, I'm just getting a paycheck. No, this is more than you getting a paycheck. That's right, Tasha. You create with your hand. I declare your recipes and things that you do. Tasha, I keep saying there's a skinny mini uh, menu that God wants you to do because there's some folks to say we need something and we want to eat good, but we want to lose weight. And so, Tasha, get on it. Get on it because I'm going to be your first customer. Get on it. There's some skinny mini. That's what I see them. Skinny mini menus that God wants to bring through you, Tasha. So don't lose that because there's a whole level of people that needs that. But this is the creativity side. God said, I am doing on the inside of you. And Monique, I think that's how Monique Banks Joyce, I believe that's how you say your name. If I said it wrong, please forgive me. Chalk it up to I just don't speak well, but not my heart. I just hear the Lord saying that, yes, as you wrote, I receive. I, I hear the Holy Ghost say, tell you that not only do you receive, but even in the next few weeks, there's some things that you have been, been bringing before the Lord specifically. There's some things that you've been asking him about. You've been talking to him about. And he says, I'm going to bring the revelation. He said, I'm going to bring the understanding. I'm going to bring the wisdom. So I come 
him and I release the wisdom of God over you for the things that you've been asking him about. And he's going to make it really plain, really simple. And it's going to be, um, it's almost going to be like, he'll be like, oh my goodness, I didn't see that. He said, that's right. You didn't see it. He said, because he's going to make it so clear to you. And I see that whatever this is, you've been asking him about, it, 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 it hits you in several places. I think part of what I sense is also, it's going to make a difference for you in a financial sense. So God says, yes, daughter, you receive it. He said, and I will release that to you. So thank you, Lord, for the cup overflowing and the blessings being received. She receives it. Now, Lord God, let her walk in it. No more limitations. Let the fullness, she ain't limiting her cup. She's saying, Lord, I'm bringing you a big faith size cup and you said it's going to overflow. So I thank you for the overflow blessings that is coming to her and through her in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just bring Leslie to you right now. And I thank you, Lord, for what Leslie is doing. Um, and Les Leslie, I just hear the Lord saying for you, that this is a season of honor for you. I, I go back to that Psalms 23 and, and, and that fifth latter part of verse five, when it says, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. And I speak this over you, Leslie, that the Lord said, this is the season of honor for you. He's honoring you by how the anointing is about to flow through you. He says, I'm honoring you because of the way that the oil is going to flow through you. I'm going to say that again, Leslie. He says, I'm honoring you because of how the oil is going to flow through you. He said, the oil is going to flow thick. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, the oil is going to flow thick. The oil is going to be uh, extreme in your life. And the Lord says that that is what he is doing for you. So Leslie, I just speak into that and I thank God for the heaviness of the oil. I think, cause you know, when you think about when you really look at like oil, or you look at the purity of oil, there actually is a difference. The more pure it is, the thicker before they refine it and before they pull all this stuff out. God said, I am giving this thickness. There's a, a purity in the oil that he is he's pouring on you and through you. And he says, this is a season of honor where you will not be hidden because you're going to be really oily. Thank you, Jesus. Not greasy, but you oily. There's a different. Greasy is that stuff you slap on. This ain't you slapping nothing on yourself. His is him pouring the oil over you. So I thank you, Lord God, for the oiliness, the holiness of what you're about to do in the life of your daughter. Father, and I just come and pray for my daughter, Jamie. This has been a hard season, and I just want you guys to pray with me for her. This has been a hard season for her because 2020 has just been kind of crazy for her. This was the year she graduated. This was the year she um, was supposed to, uh, we were supposed to take her on a cruise. This is, she, she applied for a job, got the job, and then all of a sudden, all all of the things just kind of got snatched from under her. But I'm just believing God in his mightiness and his holiness is about to just show himself to her like she's never seen before. And I just come by way and put it out in the atmosphere. And I declare, Lord God, that you're going to give my daughter above and beyond what she even asked and could think for. And so, Father, I thank you for what you're about to do in Jamie's life. I thank you for the testimony Jamie is about to have. I thank you, Lord God, for the abundance because God, we are not limited. And even if she can't hold it up for her, I'm going to hold her hands up until she learned how and can hold them up herself. So father, I thank you for your goodness and unfailing love in pursuit of her. I thank you, Lord God. You are in pursuit of my daughter. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I speak over everybody on this live and either body to come for the replay. I declare, Lord, Lord God, the table is set, the feast is prepared, and we thank you, Lord God, because it's dining time. It's time for us to feast. We're about to feast in the presence of our enemy. Not too long from now is what I hear. Not too long from now is what I hear. Not too long from now is what I hear that it's going to be feast and time, and you're going to be full. There's many of you that feel like you've been famished. Your famished season is over. God said, Says it's time to eat. It's time to eat. It's time to eat. And we say thank you. Now I seal this prayer with the precious blood of the Lamb, and I declare that it is so. I declare that it will not be otherwise. I, I declare great testimonies, great miracles, get signs about to come from your people today. I declare, Lord God, that that your blessings are going to overtake us so much, Lord God. We won't even know how to. We won't even have room enough to receive what you're about to do 
in our lives. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, Jesus, we give you praise and we say thank you. Now, Father, thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, we say have your way in us. You are that holy God. You are the awesome Father. You are the God that sanctifies us, that keeps us. You are the Lord that is our shepherd. And we sh- we will not want for nothing. You have all what we need because we have you. Now we give you praise and we say thank you. In Jesus name, we pray this prayer. Amen and amen. God bless you. As always, remember, we're going to pray what they say until the mountains are moved. And if the mountain don't want to move, God know how to crush it. And I just declare you are going to feast. Y'all need to just remind yourself it is feasting time. Your table is set. It is feasting time. So God bless you. You guys have a great rest of the day and we will meet again next Thursday. The Lord will. God bless.